going to hand over to Laura Henderson from Frontiers again. Laura is going to tell us about Green, Gold and Getting It Out There, how your choice of publisher services can affect your research profile and engagement. Laura. Hello. Um, can everyone hear me okay? Okay, great. So thank you very much for having me here today. Um, as Rachel, as, as Joe said, I'm sorry. Um, my name is uh, Laura Henderson. I'm Editorial Programme Manager um, at Frontiers Publishing House. And today I will be talking about green gold and getting out there. Um, so first of all, um, who are we? Um, if, if for those of you who don't know us, Frontiers, we're based in Lausanne in Switzerland. Uh, we're a fully digital, fully open access publisher. Um, we're now the fifth largest open access publisher in the world. Uh, we publish all papers across all our 58 academic journals under the CCBY license, which means that anyone with an internet browser can read what we publish. And we believe this is the right way to publish a good science, i.e. for everyone to read. So Frontiers was founded in 2007 by two neuroscientists who wanted to make a change in the way that ac academic publishing works, leading the way for how it should be. So our success in this area has been recognised by various awards, so particularly the ALPSP Gold Award for Innovation in Publishing um, in 2014. So to, to start off today, um, I'd like to show you the huge changes that open access has brought in the landscape of academic publishing and how these can benefit you and your research. Um, so first of all, what is the traditional um, or subscription model of journal publishing? Well, what it basically means in, is that the fees um, to buy the print or online journals are usually paid by the library or institutional subscriptions, or even worse, by individuals on a pay-per-view basis once they're outside the institution. So in 2014, uh, the subscription publishing industry generated $14 billion in revenue. If you divide that by the number of articles published under subscription journals, this means a cost to the subscribers of approximately $7,000 US dollars per article. Um, another important thing to note, besides the fact that it is not cheap, um, is that some traditional publishers have attempted to take um, open access into their articles via hybrid schemes, um, which means that um, so selective payment by the author they can pay to have their article open access. However, all this means is that same journal is still benefiting from subscription packages as well, so the publishers are just taking two bites of the cherry um, and getting even more money. Um, so the traditional model depends also on an impact-focused selection process. Um, they, you know, If your paper isn't novel enough, um, or it won't get hundreds of citations, it's quite likely to be rejected out of hand, even if it's good, valid science or solid methodology. Um, so the re resulting rejection cascade really slows down research, um, access to research. So up to one million valid science papers, that's not bad science, this is good science, um, are rejected every year into a six, up to a six-month minimum delay cycle. Now, if that's the minimum, that's 500,000 years of delay, wasted researcher time every year. Um, and secondly, even when they are published, contested number coming up, up to 80% um, of the research papers published every year, I know, Graham, I know, um, uh, are still behind subscription paywalls. So people without um, institutional support or without the individual wealth to buy each paper don't have access to them. So what this all, all over it means is that the proven research we need in the world to really make change um, is A, not reaching the stream of knowledge fast enough, and B, when it does finally get there, um, not enough people can see it. It's not, experts can't join it up, and the public can't even tell what it's about. Um, so... To compare um, um, open access to the traditional method, first let's just quickly recap what the types of open access are out there and how you as a researcher can get what you can get out of using these. So first of all, green open access. Um, this means you publish and then you self-archive your paper in a repository where it can be accessed for free. Um, you can use an institutional repository or a central repository such as PubMed or both. I recommend you use a subject and an institutional focused one. However, there are big howevers here. The publisher may require an embargo period if they allow repository publishing at all. If it's a publisher to whom you sign over copyright, beware. Um, also, it's harder for reviewers, uh, for readers to discover your paper than via a publisher who will index your work in multiple <coughs> repositories. For example, a publisher might index it in PubMed, Scopus, Web of Science and more. And then you're not reliant on one product to make your work discoverable. And also, of course, there's no promotion of your work. There's no um, publisher working to get your work out there. Um, so what is gold open access? Oh, I am sorry, I've just done something bad. Um, there we go. Um, so pure gold 
Um, all this means is it makes research output immediately available from the publisher. There are gold publishers who don't charge fees. Most of them do. Um, pure gold empowers the author. You keep the copyright. CCBY license means it's freely available for everyone to read and to reuse, including you. So you've no embargo on preprint. There's no embargo on post-publication repository. Um, and it's fully discoverable via indexing and professional promotion services from the publisher. So it means it gets to relevant readers, people more likely to cite your work. And there's no subscription fee to the readers, but it does usually involve, as I say, most, most of it now, involves um, article processing charges called APCs. These are usually payable not by the individual authors. It's not what we're designed to do. It's usually by institutions or grant funding bodies. There are a lot of mandates that support that these days. So let me just have a look then. How does open access publishing compare to that traditional picture I just gave you? Um, first of all, as I said, we invert the funding. Um, the institutional grant funder can support authors directly instead of paying huge subscription packages um, for research they've already paid for. Um, and also packages dictated by the publishers, which may not give you access to everything that you actually want. Um, and the, uh, it's cheaper. Um, as we've said, green open access repository publishing is usually free. Um, but gold open access, even where fees are usually involved, the average is ranged from 1,000 to 3,000 USDs for the, for the um, actual fee per article. That is less than half, as, as we've seen, of the traditional cost per article. So I ask you, just imagine this. Imagine if all 2 million plus research papers published each year in the world today were automatically flipped to the gold open access model. Forget green. Gold, people say it's terribly expensive, no, 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 can't do it. But actually, per article, that would save between $8 billion and $10 billion, which could then go back into actually funding research and making it happen in the world. So open access is not as expensive as people would have you believe. Okay, and as you can see, um, the open access model is gaining traction. It's becoming the normal way to publish. Um, <coughs> um, academics, institutions, and national funding bodies are... <coughs> seeking to improve the stream of knowledge in the world. Um, and as this graph shows, the current trend indicates that open access will eventually overtake um, subscription publishing in the market as soon as 2018 and by 2020 at the latest, which of course is what the EU mandate is aiming for. But why is open access gaining traction? What are the benefits it's brought to the publishing industry and to the researchers who want to be authors? The digital era has proved the perfect breeding ground for the publishing innovations which are badly needed to, in order to improve your ability as researchers to get out in the world and be seen with your research worldwide. So there's a quick snapshot here of the key innovations that open access publishers have been working on and where Frontiers uh, took our steps. So there's peer review, um, publishing platforms, scalable publishing platforms, impact metrics built in for every paper, and of course... Profiles for authors to help you be more discoverable to the people in your field and enable you to network. So this is just a very quick overview. Um, I'd now like to show you the basics that you should be looking for from any publisher, and particularly those claiming to be open access because there are a lot of pretenders in this field. There are people who are hybrid, who are not true open access, and there are people who just want to take your money and will do no publishing services whatsoever. So please, be aware when you see open access, there are good checks you can make to know that you are getting a good publisher. First of all, basic services, quality and assurance, and indexing. Um, so, open access leader Peter Suber says, start by checking whether the journal is listed in the DOAJ, this is the Directory of Open Access Journals, which tries to include all honest, peer-reviewed open access journals and exclude the dishonest ones. He also says, check to see whether the publisher belongs to OASPA, um, which is the Open Access Scholarly Publishers Association. I got it. Um, this excludes publishers who do not live up to its code of ethics. These are very simple things to check on somebody's website. I'm proud to say Frontiers, obviously, is part of both. Otherwise, I wouldn't be highlighting it. Um, but let me show you here. We have very strong collaborations and partnerships, not only with the dozens of in, um, international universities who have central membership with us, um, which enables them to prepay for authors in their institution and comply with funding mandates, but also with all the major read, uh, research indexes indices in the world, PubMed, <laughs> Scopus, DOAJ, um, Web of Science, you name it. Um, and this uh, also through f uh, re regulatory and ethical publishing bodies such as COPE, um, the Committee for Publication Ethics, um, and OASPA. And this means that um, 
our, our research is not only disseminated as widely as possible, but the high quality of our processes and of the research we publish is in immediately apparent to both the people who publish with us and the people who are evaluating their research. Um, and what else? Um, what are the basic services? Um, so, check a journal. There's um, principles of transparency and best practice in scholarly publishing. The link is there. Um, published by Cope, OASPA and the DOAJ. Um, they recommend two key things. First, they say peer review process, and I quote, journal content must be clearly marked as to whether it's peer reviewed or not. Peer review is defined as obtaining advice on individual manuscripts from reviewers experts in the field who are not part of the journal's editorial staff. This process, as well as any policies related to the journal's peer review procedures, shall be clearly described on the journal's website. If not, don't trust the journal. Two, a governing body or editors, and I quote again, journals shall have editorial boards or other governing bodies whose members are recognised experts in the subject areas included within the journal's scope. The full names and affiliations of the journal's editors shall be provided on the journal's website. So again, if the journal you're looking at doesn't disclose its peer review processes and doesn't disclose who its editors are, maybe you shouldn't submit to them. I'm proud to say, of course, Frontiers does. Um, and we have a unique approach to peer review. We set out to provide an industry-leading peer review process. We have a collaborative forum. Um, the way this works, it's impact-neutral peer review. Um, we instruct our reviewers that it, unless it is um, objectively bad science, like there's clearly something objectively wrong with it, it should go forward for peer review and be collaboratively iterated upon to become the best paper it can be. So we are not screening for papers that have highest impact. We believe the community should decide that post-publication, what is useful and what is not, not the publisher. Um, the authors, reviewers and the handling associate editor can interact directly in the review forum, um, responding to each other's comments in real time if they're logged in at the same time. Um, we also credit our reviewers. We disclose the names of the handling editor and the reviewers of every paper that we publish upon publication. Um, we believe that this is fair not only to the reviewers for crediting their work and their time, and they actually can build up a profile with us showing how many papers they've worked on, and they get credit for every single one. They also get cumulative impact of the papers that they've gone on to um, improve. Um, but it also is fairer to the author. They know who's, who's responded to them. They can reach out and they can es establish contact. <clears throat> and what this leads to, that's slightly out of date. We actually have 89 days on average now um, <laughs> from submission to final decision. It is, that is one of the industry-leading times because what this means is people get engaged. The reviewers don't just submit a report and walk away and ignore the author shouting, hey, you, you got it wrong. Um, you know, they, they really can iterate on this. Um, and this is what won us the AL, ASP, ALPSP 2014 Award for Innovation in Publishing. But there's so much more. Those are just the basics you should demand from a publisher you entrust your hard-earned research to. Here's how leading open access publishers can really change the game for you in terms of discoverability and engagement with your publications and with your profile. So, first of all, altmetrics are more readily available these days. Um, for example, from altmetrics to the capital A, the company. Um, and so with articles digitally accessible and therefore digitally trackable, you should be able to know who's reading your research, when and where. With Frontiers, you can. Our altmetrics are built into every paper, they show reviews, downloads, <coughs> reader demographics. You can see how people are finding your research, what the top referring sites are, where are people coming from to, to link to your paper. Um, and of course, this means it's post-publication analytics. You get to see the impact of your paper post-publication that doesn't rely on the impact factor of the journal. You can see the actual <coughs> impact of your individual paper. And it means your peers get to decide your paper's relevance, not the publisher. Uh, we've always advocated a separation between the process of review and evaluation of impact. So we therefore promote the use of the alternative impact metrics, um, and this is available for every article we publish. Second, what about you? You yourself. How can you network with top authors in your field? Well, in 2010, ahead of Orchid, ahead of Google, and ahead of Elsevier, we launched our Loop Network, uh, which raises our author's discoverability and impact. It's a completely open network, so Loop, Loop boosts, re boosts the reputation and impact of researchers. It makes you stand out in the crowd, helps you discover and find the most relevant information to you in your area of expertise as well. Basically what it does is it creates your profile, which scrapes all the major index databases, so Web of Science, Scopus, PubMed, not just your publications with Frontiers, all your publications. Okay. Um, and it, it also links, if you have an ORC ID or ORCID, 
it links directly to that, you can import to it. Um, it's fully integrated all the way across our platform, um, so you can easily in integrate with field leaders. Um, I'll quickly skip on. Um, do you want to know how, um, how well-reviewed well your whole work is cumulatively? Using Loop, you get your overall author impact um, for all your papers. Um, and this is really worth seeing. People can click through, they can see this about you, they can see what kind of impact you have in the world. And finally, let's talk about those promotion services as well. How will your peers find your work? Um, publishers will usually do some form of promotion, of course, but being fully digital and being fully open access, our work is very shareable. We also have great tracking metrics on who's reading stuff, so we can do much more targeted promotion of your work. Um, our article alert email goes out to a million people every month. Um, our newsletter to 300,000. And just in conclusion, one final note here. This is why open access really makes a change in the world and to researchers. Its publications can be read and used to further knowledge to build on and accelerate developments. Here you see a world map of Frontier's 250 plus million uh, article views and downloads total. And you can see it's totally worldwide. In particular, there are interesting concentrations in places like Mountain View, Silicon Valley, and Shenzhen, the Chinese equivalent, um, and which are crucially in increasing um, also um, in many development hotspots, the regions called the Global South. Um, which this suggests that our pu publications have influence and are contributing not only to the development of startup technologies, but to the development of the whole world. So I urge you, be a part of the open access journey. Make sure that when you publish, you select a publisher who can really meet all the service needs your research deserves and get you out there with the strongest engagement profile. Okay, thank you very much, and I'll look forward to the questions later.